Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We provide fan-oriented and analytic discussions on a variety of animated shows, movies, and anime currently featuring Steven Universe, Gravity Falls, Star Wars Rebels, Moonbeam City, Ruby, and Adventure Time. Hi, I'm Dylan Heisen, and I'll be taking you solo through the latest episode of Star Wars Rebels, The Future of the Force. The tenth episode of the second season, but really the eighth episode of the second season of Star Wars Rebels, if you don't include Caesar Lothal. I take you through, uh, the latest episode of Rebels every week here on the Overly Animated Podcast, and you can find out more about us at overlyanimated.com. Um, let's get, let me get right into the future of the Force. Spoilers for this episode and all of Star Wars Rebels. Oh, I guess first, I want to mention, um, Star Wars Rebels was renewed re- for season three this week. Hooray. So we will be getting a lot more Rebels, especially because season two is already 22 episodes. So we have a lot more to go through season two. So it looks like not only is Rebels, uh, renewed for season for not only is rebels like not going away anytime soon it's also just going to be like an annual show like we got um we're getting 12 episodes this um this kind of fall season cycle and then we're going to get the rest in the spring so it looks like it's just going to be an annual show as opposed to like an only fall show or an only spring show um we've got you know we got apparently two more episodes i don't think that's right uh we have the Star Wars, there's a list of Star Wars Rebels on Wikipedia, list Legacy and Secret of Prisoner X10. Um, I believe that next week we will be getting Legacy, which will be the mid-season finale of Star Wars Rebels. Um, I saw this in the November Disney XD highlights, and then I believe that that is it for the year. So then it starts back up in, you know, January, February, wherever they would like it to. I don't have any information on that. So, uh, definitely the preview for next week made it look like a mid-season finale. So definitely looking forward to that. And I'm happy the show has been renewed for a third season, although I'm a little worried about the crew getting <laughs> complacent, I guess. Um, the quality is not at an incredibly high point at the moment. So it's a little worrying in that regard. Um, not that, I mean, I think it can only be a good thing that there's an episode safety net that allows them to do things where they might otherwise feel shoehorned in by an episode limit. So now there's no limit. Let's explore higher levels of storytelling. Um, let's get into the future of the Force, though, where unfortunately I don't think we explored higher levels of storytelling. I think the future of the Force was a fine episode of Star Wars Rebels. Last week, I really enjoyed Stealth Strike, um, much more so than I saw other places. Actually, I guess I only saw an AV club that gave it a B. Um, what's interesting about that review is I kind of agreed <laughs> with what it was saying, but I just didn't really care about the things that it said were negatives. Um, I, I did, I just really liked all the character work they did in that episode and it had some great action. Uh, I think the future of the force is similar to Stealth Strike in that it, um, also has some great action pieces. That's definitely the high point of the episode are the, uh, the lightsaber on <laughs> lightsaber fights, uh, the Inquisitor versus Jedi fights that we get here. Um, and we also have a ch- uh, car chase action sequence, which is kind of new for this show. Uh, and I thought it was pretty well executed. It was all exciting enough, but, um, the problem is that the script was really, I don't know if it was really weak, but it was just really unexciting. <laughs> Um, the dialogue throughout the episode was, uh, stale, which is not entirely unheard of for the show. The show never, like, has terrible dialogue, so it's good in that regard, but it, it sometimes just has the most stereotypical lines that people, as people just speak in cliches and stuff, and this episode is indicative of that. Um, and the plot itself was, they did a good job, it was a little, because there are like three fronts to the plot, um, there's like what Ashoka was doing, then there was what, uh, Kane and Ezra was doing, were doing, and then there was what, uh, Zeb and Chopper were doing, so it was a little, it could have been hard to keep track of, but they did a good job making it very obvious what was happening, but the, pro- the other side of that is that it just became very boring, because, it all, uh, it was just also very obvious what was happening, and nothing, like, not really twist throughout the show. Um, another problem might have been how they wrote the two Inquisitors. Uh, kind of a low point for this show is when we have 
fifth brother and seventh sister who are not named in their introductory episode. They're back. And now they literally just say each other's names and it's really cringeworthy, <laughs> that scene, because it doesn't make sense why they would be saying each other's names so blatantly like that. Oh, what, they've never called each other by names before, so what, they're just going to say their full titles for us? Thank you very much for announcing that. So that sucked. But uh it was okay overall. I do like the character models of the two, and I like how they've been fighting. Um Something that stood out was that seemed like the seventh sister is getting most of the action in this episode uh fifth brother is kind of useless <laughs> at least it seemed like it to me at one point he just gets knocked out for a solid minute uh so i don't know what was up with that but uh the, the characterization of these two inquisitors was um not super exciting i think this might be a problem because uh last i mean last season i really loved uh jason isaac's inquisitor and that being said, he just, he was never anything special. He was just a, uh, a threatening force. And you can't really do that again. We need something else. So you have two of them, and one of them's like weird <laughs> and female, the seventh sister. And one of them's just, uh, big, fifth brother. And then that's just, that's it. So we need more to define them. And they need to do more interesting things. So that's, that's where we are with that. So overall, this episode was, uh, good action. Uh, bad, uh, it wasn't necessarily bad everything else, just kind of mediocre everything else. And you need more to have a uh, very fulfilling TV. And uh, uh, this season, if you've listening consistently to podcasts that I'm doing this season, you'll find a commonality in that I'm very unexcited by all the episodes. I mean, ignoring Siege and Lothal, I've talked about Lost Commanders onwards, and the only episode that I was super thrilled with was Stealth Strike. That being said, I really did like Wings of the Master and Blood Sisters. Um, so it's the show has a trend of um the big worry after season one was that Greg Weissman, one of the three creators of the show, was leaving. And he's the one with the storytelling chops. He's the one who I have um un uh uninhibited faith in in ter- in to tell a great story. He Gargoyles, Young Justice, he's brilliant, right? So um now he's gone we're left with simon kinberg who writes stereotypical action movies and we have dave filoni who i who is from avatar the last airbender and he's great however he is not on the writing side of the show so i'm very i was very worried heading into the season what would happen writing wise and to a certain extent as expected it's been pretty stale so far they need to find their footing without uh weissman i think now and they haven't really yet also kinberg just hasn't written any episodes um we just have a uh, crew of uh, a writing staff of people who I do not know, although maybe I should know them because some of these episodes have been okay. Um, I don't know who wrote Future of the Force. It's not on the, the Wikipedia right now, but uh, it's it's a little worrying, I guess. I don't want to fall into the habit of just watching the show every week and having it and have it being um, have it being like stale. And it's not, it's not like the show's a chore to watch, but it's just like, okay, I mean, I, I, I do enjoy watching it, but I want it to be more. I want to be excited for it every week, and I'm not at that point right now. And I think that the show could get there. Uh, something that I see, I have the uh, Star Wars Rebels wiki wikia up now. Um, let's read this. The plot of this episode is similar to Children of the Force, an episode of Star Wars Clone Wars in which... Uh, the someone captures force sensitive children so they basically i so again i've not seen clone wars but they reference this in the episode they say that uh at the end canaan's like they did this during the clone wars but the uh jedi order was there to stop them um and i think it was a good thing to but now but now i guess we're the ones to take that role so that was kind of a good thing to say i like that uh plot movement but you, they, you you shouldn't just make an episode that's the same of an episode of a sh- other show that you've done and then just blatantly reference it during the show. I don't think that's very good. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see fans of Clone Wars review this episode and say that this was just the same thing we've already seen and it's really boring. So let's talk about uh, Future of the Force. Um, so like I said, this episode is similar to Stealth Strike in that it has a lot of great action pieces, and I don't have a lot to say about them, but we can talk about them a little bit. Um, but so like Stealth Strike I loved. What's the difference? And I think the difference is the character work. Um, Future of the Force doesn't really do anything to excite me character-wise. Uh, Ezra had some great uh, plot progression and character progression in Stealth Strike. Um, you could you could say that it was too, too, too significant of an extent, 
uh, like throughout season two, Ezra's kind of been struggling with this training and then suddenly in Stealth Strike, he is like the best fighter ever. Um, and then Commander Sato super impressed. Uh, so I think that might have been a criticism of Stealth Strike. I don't really care about that, but, um, like I was just happy to see something happening character wise, but, uh, here Ezra doesn't really do much. He's the big, the big character moment for Ezra is he needs to tap into the, the force to connect with this, uh, baby, um, who is a force sensitive baby. Um, but like the, they didn't know that the babies were force sensitive, even though that was incredibly obvious. So first of all, that's the negative of the episode. The audience knew something the entire time that the characters didn't know, and it went on too long. And it's like, okay, Kane, and you're just really dumb, which we already know anyway. Kane is not the smartest, but why didn't you just, why, okay, Inquisitors after babies. Like, what else would it be? I didn't even watch Clone Wars and saw that episode. I know very little about the Star Wars universe, and this was just very obviously where this was going. So if I know this, Kane, and I feel like you should know this, um, who you actually are, Jedi. So, that was a big, that was a big negative with the episode, and I feel like reviews might play that up a lot. Um, things like this, I think you should try to look over because they're just, uh, if you focus too much on these just inherent problems with the structure of an episode, you're gonna get lost and you're gonna miss the kinda details of character work and stuff that's going on, so I'm not one to focus on those. But it, it definitely has to be mentioned that would, that sucked. Uh, so we had that. So the, uh, the point I was making though is that I think Ezra, Ezra's like, um, okay, you have to connect with, here's my read on it. I'm not like well versed in all the Jedi abilities, but Ezra, you have to connect with this baby much like you would do an animal who we saw later, uh, who we saw earlier. Like Ezra specifically had training to connect with that one animal in that episode. <laughs> that was specific, but, um, so. Ezra tries to connect with the baby and calm him. It's like, Ezra, you need to stay calm in order to calm um, the baby. But uh, but he couldn't do it. And then later it's like, oh, well, it's because uh, it's because it's Force-sensitive baby. So I guess that changed that. So doesn't the twist, quote-unquote twist, because everyone knew it was coming, doesn't that like undermine the progression that Ezra was having, right? Because it's like, oh, Ezra's learning to use his Jedi abilities more. But no, the, that Jedi ability doesn't apply here. It's like a different Jedi thing in order to connecting with someone else who's Force-sensitive, right? Um, so that was a little unclear to me, how Ezra's abilities applied there. And I feel like... Um, we didn't have much progression on Ezra's part. Kanan, I don't, other than the end where he was like, um, I guess that task falls to us now of, of, uh, trying to protect force sensitive children from the empire. Uh, I don't think that he did, he did much. Um, we had a really awesome Ashoka, uh, action piece. Ashoka's not a character on the show. And what I mean by that is she, um, doesn't, she's she's just like an entity she's not like someone who we sympathize with who is supposed to have relationships with our characters really she's just like uh, a force she's from a previous show i don't have a problem with how they've been using her because the she hasn't been a main character so i've been very happy with that because i was very worried coming to the season that we would subvert our main crew with um with all these pe- these pieces from the Clone Wars who were Rex, and Rex kind of was a main character, but Rex has also just been very well characterized. Ashoka, on the other hand, hasn't been much of anything, so she's just brought here to be incredibly awesome and reference, <laughs> and reference Vader, and, uh, her action piece fighting, a uh, fifth, seventh sister, um, yeah, was, uh, very good. Probably the highlight of the episode for me, action wise. Um, I can, that's, I'm not one to be super into fight sequences. But one thing I found from watching the show is I can appreciate a really good lightsaber fight. Um, that was kind of my highlight of the end of se- the finale of season one, uh, Jason Isaacs versus uh, Kanan and Ezra's there too. Like I, I can really appreciate these good these good fi- uh, action pieces in the show, and to a certain extent, it's the highlight of the show for me. Like the writing's not always uh, there, so it falls on these things, and they do come through. To be fair, um, certain aspects of the show are are very good. Um, so we had that. Um, I mean, Zeb didn't, what did Zeb, how did Zeb grow or ex- exhibit anything interesting? Not really. So again, and Chopper, Chopper actually has had a lot of character growth recently. Like Chopper <laughs> has been like the worst, uh, but recently he has not been the worst. So that has been his progression from the worst to not the worst. I'm not saying he's good, but he's just not the worst. But the, here he doesn't do anything. Here he, um, is oh well he he has a nice scene playing with the the children at the end so that's that's nice but at the same time 
when he's with Zeb, it's like, oh, we're going to blow up the thing. Oh, no, we're going to take the baby out before. Well, we'll blow up the ship after we get the baby. What is wrong with you, Zeb says to Chopper. So <laughs> Chopper being a, a jerk again there. Um, with, with Chopper, it's never clear whether uh, if the ghost mem- the rest of the ghost members weren't around, whether he would actually, like, be really terrible. So that's kind of always the question with Chopper. Um, I think we're supposed to imply that he wouldn't be and that he's just joking. But at the same time, how can the droid joke like that, you know? I think it makes more sense if we were to take him literally in terms of consciousness and droids. I don't even know how that works anyway. So, uh, yeah, so the character stuff wasn't really there. Let's, the general plot of the episode, I had to bring up the wiki for this. They're on Takobo City, who it's not someplace I should know. Apparently it's new, um, which is an Athorian uh, population on the planet, which are the main, we see that there's only one species here and they are the Athorians apparently. Um, so the city, I think the city is kind of interestingly designed when they have a kind of a broad shot of it. And then we move in and it's, I guess it stands out to me cause it's more, um, kind of similar to less, less like run down. A lot of cities that we've seen haven't been like huge cities like Ezra's, um, Ezra's home city. I don't know how cities work on a uh, Lothal, but I guess where was it? <laughs> Because there's the main thing, and then we never really see anything outside of that on the fall. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, it, it's just kind of like a like a uh, like a small city. This to me is like built up, and it was kind of a pretty cool design. Um, and the Thorians, who we've seen a lot before on the show, uh, I don't. They didn't have much role other than being the baby and uh, getting kicked out of cars <laughs> to to have them uh, to have them taken over. Let me. Let me talk about that one because that was kind of notable to me was this uh, car fight. Um, actually, I don't have a lot to say about it, but I thought it was really interesting because we have <laughs> two types of fights. We have lightsaber fights and then we have space fights. And uh, here we had a car fight, car chase scene. Um, and it was it was kind of cool, I guess. It was uh, I'm, I'm happy that we're not just having anonymous spaceships uh, shooting at each other, which is very typical of this show and star wars in general i feel like this is a little more intimate if we because we can see people because they're in the cars or you know open air and stuff um yeah so we had uh that sequence we had the ashoka two sabers um was awesome uh we had uh kanan and uh, zeb versus the inquisitors for a little bit they were overmatched so good to know um trying to just keep a Keep a tab on who who's uh who can beat who in these types of things. I would assume that Kanan and Zeb would be overmatched by the Inquisitors. If not, they wouldn't be much of a threat. Um, and then uh, so I don't think know if Ezra really ever gets into it because he's taking the baby back the entire time. We had this. Uh, just trying to think of notable things from the episode. We had the uh, in, in introductory sequence with the civilian transport. Two Inquisitors come. Uh, great cargo. Great interest to us. And then. Uh, like either Seventh Sister or Fifth Bear just like kills a bunch of people on there, so that was really fun to see. Sure, um, I did. I do like trying interesting storytelling techniques, like starting off with a. It's not really interesting, but starting off with a cold open that is uh, that is like a different uh, different from what we'll see, be seeing the rest of the episode to set up the story. Potentially, the problem is that it gave away the content of the story too much. Um, I guess of note, Ashoka references. Uh, she said she was investigating a Sith Lord, uh, the Sith Lord, who we we're meant to imply that she knew who that was in the Siege of Lothal. So she seems like she's not telling them that information, the rest of the rebellion. So I guess that's notable. Um, later, uh, the, the Inquisitors say that, uh, Vader would be, Lord Vader would be pre- pleased with, uh, your capture. Yeah. So notable that uh these inquisitors are working right under right under vader so darth vader should not be the main villain force in this show because it kind of just just takes the air out of the sails of all these characters who while we care about just aren't important compared to compared to vader right so uh it's good to not have him be the direct force although i think it's interesting that they're keeping him kind of right above the surface you know uh, just keeping him in the sp- in the in in the realm of things without having him being a direct influence. Like it's fine if he's there in Siege of Lothal, but I don't want him there during the season. I think that's a very good and necessary storytelling choice by them. Um, all the stuff with the baby, Pipey, Ura, 
Uh, they call them red blades, the Inquisitors. Interesting. Uh, maybe that's something I just wasn't aware of. I don't know if they've said it on the show before, so that's notable. Um, yeah, there, we had a lot of cool stuff with lightsabers going through levels of the, uh, housing development that they were at. I thought that was kind of, kind of, um, well, a, a well executed visual thing, uh, that looked really cool to have lightsabers coming in and out of walls and floors and stuff. If, if this, if, if me saying stuff like that ever sounds like not sincere or like I'm trying to pull at, uh, pull at things nice to say, no, it's not really true. I just, I'm more adept at storytelling, um, storytelling critiques. So when it gets into like animation, visual critiques or, um, or like, uh, action piece stuff, I'm not going to be as eloquent about it, but I would like, but I still think it's notable. So I want to mention it even if I'm not as uh, great at uh, talking about it. So yeah, I know I thought that was that was good. These things were kind of storyboarded very well. The problem isn't the storyboarding or the direction, it's the script. I think that's very clear throughout this episode. Um the um, potentially we spent too much time in the beginning. This this episode's like 15 minutes non-action, 15 minutes action. Um I'm not sure if that's a a great balance because looking back, I have nothing to say about the beginning. Um and yeah, I think I think there that's, uh, he senses fear because he's strong with the, he senses your fear because he's strong with the force. Um, children could grow up to be a Jedi. Yeah, I, again, I still am not clear on how this affects what was happening with Ezra and honing his powers with connecting to children. So, yeah, again, I mean, I've said it a bunch. The episode, not great script wise, fine in other areas. Um, I guess last mention the Inquisitors again. Um, I think Seventh Sister is interesting enough. Like her, she has a really nice sequence with Ashoka, and she also fights with um with Kanan. And I don't see Fifth Brother doing that much. It seems like they're working more in tandem here. That is notable because in their first uh, appearance, they're butting heads with each other. Is obvious they're not used to working together. So. What do we think of these villains? I meant, I talked about it earlier. I think that they need to be more well defined. I think they need to be more notable other than just these, uh, these interesting, other than just these like threatening forces. Seven Sister is an interesting design, so that's good. But what is she beyond that, you know? Like she says some weird stuff, but, but what, what other than that? Uh, Fifth Brother, I think his whole thing was that he's super intimidating, yet he gets knocked out for an entire minute during this episode. So I think that might have subverted his only notable facet of his character. So we need to go places with them. Um, I think they need to be in more episodes. Uh, looks like we'll be getting them next week, so that's good. Um, and other than that, you know, okay episode. Um, I, I, I'd like some, some stronger scripting from the show. Um, some, some stronger character moments. I'm all about that, as you can tell from listening to this. And I think that that's it. I, on the AV Club scale, I don't think the review is up yet. What would I give this? Probably a, uh, a B or a B minus is what I would give it. I think that's fine. Um, next week we have, like I said, even though the, um, even though the Wikipedia, article is weird with it legacy we have next week oh well it's oh the wikipedia goes legacy properly in its proper spot next week and then is secret of prisoner x10 three days after which i think is not true but i can check as we're as we're going through this um disney xd november highlights uh so the promo for next week said um Ezra had like either flashbacks to his parents or like they're in a dream or something. Um, and the Inquisitors were there. Agent Callus was there. Open your mind to the truth. They said it, Ezra. And that's basically all I caught from that. Um, so I think that seems interesting. I'm glad we're getting the conclusion to the Ezra's parents thing. That's been going on a lot. Um, December highlights, not November highlights. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I am looking forward to next week. I'm interested to see what they do with, uh, with like uh, what where they're going in terms of long term plot threads for this season, like it's not obvious to me what the overall plot of the season is other than like inquisitors chasing the rebellion down um like we have agent Cal we have a thing with agent Callus now who's like a growing threat even though he's not a threatening person, and then we have um and then yeah, and then that's it, so there's not much there, so I'm interested to see what the big like even if there are not a lot of long-term running plot threads, we can still get uh, 
we can still see what's important to the show to highlight during like the mid season finale. Yeah. Looking, looking like, uh, as the empire attacks and the rebel fleet, the rebel fleet on Garel, Kanan and Ezra return to Lothal to find a former prisoner with a lot of knowledge about Ezra's parents. No, again, we're doing that. No, we already did that. A former prisoner with knowledge of Ezra's parents. Uh, what's Zebo? No, is that, are we finding Zebo again? So, yeah, there's the, I forgot about this. There's this whole thing with um Garel and uh the droid recorded Ezra conveniently speaking out loud to nobody saying Garel. So, great. Um I think that was I think that was reasonable actually cuz you talk to babies out loud, you know that makes sense. Garel apparently is a planet near uh Lothal who where we have been before this season. I don't even remember us being there. So, I'm glad that planet has made an impression on me. Um I guess, I guess they need to be somewhere. Last season was really good planet wise because they're all staged, they centered on Lothal a lot. This season it's been less focused and I've lost track a lot. So we'll see, we'll see if, is, are they really referring to Zebo with this description? I really hope not. We're just having a different prisoner with convenient knowledge of Ezra's parents? That's great. So legacy next week. Uh, I, my review or my podcast on legacy might not be up. Right away next week, it might even take until Thursday or later in the week. I'm going to be out of town, so I need to find a time to to watch and record. Not sure when that will be yet, um, but it looks like we'll be. I'll continue Rebels coverage probably next when it returns. I'm not sure when it'll return yet, January or whatever. Um, also notable tonight is that uh, our other, we usually podcast on Moonbeam City Wednesday nights. Comedy Central pushed changes time slot to 1 a.m. Um, so that's not good. <laughs> it means it's getting canceled. So that sucks. But, uh, we'll still cover the last two episodes of the season, uh, on Thursdays, um, of the following, the next two weeks. So yeah, I'm Dylan Heisen. You can find us, find out about this podcast at overlyanimated.com. Uh, let me know what you thought of, uh, next week's legacy, what, whatever this week, this future of the force. Let me know what you thought about this episode, whether you agree with me on it. Um, you can comment on YouTube. Uh, you check our YouTube comments so you can find our YouTube channel link on overlyanimated.com. Uh, it's just overly animated podcast YouTube if you want to search for that on Google. You can comment on the webs on our website in the comment section. You can send me an ask on Tumblr, um, overly animated podcast.tumblr.com, my personal Tumblr, dylanova.tumblr.com, and, uh, Twitter too, you know, all of that stuff. So yeah, there we go. Uh, thanks for listening guys. Um, hoping my rambling wasn't too bad. But uh, let's uh, looking forward to our mid-season finale next week, and I'll see you guys then or on Thursday because, again, it'll be delayed. So thanks for listening. Bye.